Hi there, Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven back again. Today's uh, topic is how to make a hook and eye clasp out of 16 gauge copper wire. This is the latest installment in the Wire Working 101 series. By now, those of you who've been watching those videos have probably gotten the idea that all the skills that I, I've taught in this series so far are pointing in one direction, and you'd be correct. Uh, all these skills that I'm sharing have the goal in mind of helping you create a piece of finished jewelry out of your piece of Viking wire knitting. So everything from how to make a wire wrapped loop to how to finish leather ends to how to make a cuff to how to make a clasp. All of those skills will help you complete your piece of jewelry. So I hope you'll stick around for today's topic and I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to try a new camera angle today because... Uh, I don't want the actual camera stand to be in between me and the wire. You'll see why in a minute. But just a quick reminder as to what it is we're doing today, and we're making a hook and eye um, clasp. I don't know if you can quite see it, but um, there you go. You can see it there now. Um, there's some texturing on, on this clasp, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. But first, let's talk about the tools we're going to need today. You're going to want your round nose pliers and your chain nose pliers. You're going to want a pair of pliers that we haven't talked much about so far and that's square nose pliers. I like to have two. They make opening and closing jump rings really convenient and also for tweaking your clasp and you'll see what I mean by that as we go along today. If you've got nylon jawed pliers they will come in handy for straightening the wire off the spool. If you don't have them, it's not the end of the world. You just might need to do a little bit more cleaning of the wire to help straighten it out. You're going to need a pair of flush cutters um, geared to cut through 16 gauge wire. That's much heavier than anything we've used so far. Um, these are my super flush cutters uh, Sandstrom's and um, so I'll be using these today because these can cut up to a 12 gauge. You're going to want your bench block. You're going to want a mallet and a chasing hammer. Remember the chasing hammer, it's got the uh, slightly curved, polished uh, side here and a little ball peen on the other side. We're going to use this end today as well. Um, you will want a couple of jump rings. Uh, you can buy them. I will be posting another video uh, shortly in terms of how you make jump rings you can make jump rings yourself with a pair of super flush cutters, but uh, for today's purposes, we're going to use some pur purchased ones. You're going to need some automotive uh, sandpaper. Uh, anywhere from 1,000 grit to uh, 2,000 grit is what I tend to use. I use the coarser um, 800 to 1,000 for um, heavier wire like we're going to use here today. I've got my trusty Pro Polish pad for cleaning my wire. And I've got a hefty spool of 16 gauge wire that I purchased uh, online some time ago. Now, the first thing you have to do whenever you are um, going to work right off the spool is you need to uh, straighten your wire. So I'm going to try and do as much of this in front of the camera. Oops, boy, did I ever do that in front of the camera. Sorry about that. Basically, I'm holding the wire like this, holding it firmly on the spool, and I'm pulling it through the um, nylon jaw pliers. What that does is it helps take some of the uh, irregularities out of the wire, and it also helps harden it ever so slightly. Then I'll switch over to my Pro Polish pad and clean this wire a little bit. Now, I've cleaned far more than we're actually going to use today, but I wanted to be able to show you how to work off a spool. All right, first thing I'm going to do is get my flush cutters and square up the end. So now I've got a nice square end there. First piece we're going to do is going to be the um, um, the, the eye part of the hook and eye. Now normally I use my wrap and tap pliers for those, but seeing as how most people will have a pair of round nose pliers, I'm going to show you how to do that with these today. 
Now as you can see, all I've done there is make a letter P on the end of the wire. Now I'm going to push my pliers back in place and I am working at the bottom of the pliers because I want that loop to be nice and big. And now I come back the other way wrapping the wire around until it, I let it cross under so I've made my complete figure eight. You can see there. Then I just slide it out. Now, this is where remembering the good, what side of your cutters is the good side is important. The flat side is where you get the best cut. So I'm going to slide my cutters in there. See if I can get that to come and focus. There you go. And I'm going to cut that off right there. And now I've basically got the beginnings of a figure eight shape. I'm going to put my pliers back in like this and give it a little tweak to help close it off. If you've got your square nose pliers handy, you can go in and grab this and give it a little push. I think I pushed a little too far. Let's try that again. There you go. The beginnings of your clasp right there. Now set that to one side. Now go back and square off the end of your wire again. Just cut off a little tiny bit. That's all you need to do. The first part of the hook of the clasp um, that I usually make is a little bit on the end. So let me show you. You start with a little loop on the end, you make one curve, and then you make another. So that's what we're going to do next. So working close to the end of my pliers, I'm just going to make a very tiny letter P, as you can see. The next I'm going to come in with my pliers. Now it's important to try and make your next curve in the same plane as you made your first one. So basically the two curves are lined flat. So you're this far now. The last part that we need to do is the loop on the bottom. So you put your pliers in. I usually put in uh, pliers so that the first loop is resting on them. And I just wrap around, all the way around, all the way around. Come in. I think I may have made a little boo-boo there. No, no, no. That is not terribly round. Oh, dear me. Well, when you make a mistake, what you can do with your wrap and tap, or sorry, your nylon jaw pliers. See, I really want to use the wrap and tap. That's what I'm used to. But no big deal. I won't go down so far this time. Now I've got the basic shape. I go in with the flat side of my pliers or my cutters facing my work. And now I have the beginnings of my hook. So you've got two pieces there now. You can stick your wire roll to one side now because we're going to work on these. The first thing that I like to do is go in with a pair of um, square nose pliers and gently push that curve together. And now I have to pause because my dog wants to go out. Hang tough. And we're back. The dog's bladder problem has been addressed. Okay. Um, I think where we were is I was explaining what I use the uh, square uh, nose pliers for. You can see right now there's a little gap there in the loop. And if you just... <laughs> By now you all know that I have a beagle. She's a wonderful beagle. She's also our early warning system. Um, I have to go see what this is about. Sorry. The joys of kitchen table jewelry making. What? Anyway, 
I think I was showing you um, ways that I use the square nose pliers to um, uh, close up the, um, the little gaps sometimes. I just grab it like this and I give it a little push. These are pretty good. Now we're going to end up doing that several times because the next step we need our bench block for. And the next step's going to involve your mallet because whenever you work with wire, it's very easy to get the ends um, out of skew or out of, the, out of the, the same plane. So just going to flatten that a little bit. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our chasing hammer in and we're going to work on tapping along this curve here and on the other side. And the reason for doing that is it will set the curve. In other words, with normal usage the, the cla of the clasp shouldn't uh, cause the curve to disappear. So holding it gingerly with one hand, just flatten the edge slightly. You'll notice it's now got a different profile compared to the other side. I'm going to focus on the curves on this one now, just like you did before. Try not to smack your finger. I do that a lot. I don't recommend it. <laughs> now, here we go. First thing I'm going to do is go in and gently push that curve back together and I'm going to do the same thing here now. Here we go. Now is where we do a little bit of texturing. This time we're going to use the polished ball peen end. And what I want you to do is gently, you're just tapping, in different places along the curve on one side and then you flip it around and you do the other end. Now what that does, you can probably see the way it reflects the light differently. I do it on both sides. I will tell you that I always start with the side that what I will be treating as the right side. I go to the wrong side and tap a little bit and then I flip it over and freshen the tapping on the other side because every time you hit that metal with this hammer on this block you ultimately smooth out some of what you've already done on the other side. So we're going to go back now and just put a little bit of texturing there and up here. And we're going to go back in with our square nose pliers, supporting the work with our hands. And all you're trying to do, actually, I think I'm going to nip it this way a little bit, just to square that up a little bit more. All you're trying to do is make sure that there aren't any huge gaps. Now we're going to do the same thing with our hook. The reason I go in and I grab this, you can see that the tapping has caused the gap here to get a little bit bigger. And uh, that's what happens with metal. So we'll, we'll address that now in a second. I'm just going to keep tapping all the way down because I want the entire piece to have a little bit of texture to it. Flip it over. Do a little bit over here. Now 
And back to the right side again, just to freshen this up a bit. And you'll notice that this is a little bit skewed now. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a tap with the plastic mallet, because that shouldn't change anything that we've done. And then I'm going to go in with my square nose pliers. And I'm putting them in the middle, just gently going to close up some of my curves. You know, that curve on the very end. Oops. There we go. And that curve, I'm just going to press that with my fingers. So now you've got two pieces. You're almost ready to go. Now, normally what I do when I get to this stage is I toss them in my tumbler for a little while. But um, it's 16 gauge wire. It's fairly hefty. And if it still feels a little... Uh, like there's a little too much give in it for you for your or for your preferences you can take your plastic mallet and you can um, work on it some more but for the purposes of, of demonstrating to you we're just about there now the next thing we need to do is attach a pair of jump rings now these are pre-made 18 gauge jump rings with an in inside diameter of four millimeters I bought these from one of my uh, favorite suppliers online. And uh, all you do now, if you look for the opening. Aha, there we are. You look for the opening. I'm going to get up close to the camera for this and see if it'll focus. You open jump rings like this. You start like this and you twist. So now that jump ring is nice. Oops, come on, focus on the jump ring. You can do it nice and wide open. I do that. I go right back in the way that I was. And I push it back. Come on, focus. There you go. Jump ring is closed. We're going to do that again. Square nose pliers, you come in. And you give it a tweak. Now it's nice and open. Slide on your clasp. Go back in. Now, this time I didn't quite get it on the first go. So I'll open it up again and I'll try again. This time pushing in a little bit as I go. I don't have my... um. Yeah, I got it that time. I don't have my um, magnifiers on because I, I need to be able to see what I'm doing down here too. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Once you've got your, um, your clasps, or I should say your jump rings attached, all is left to do now is a little bit of finishing. Now, there's a couple of places where you're going to find flea bites. You're going to find a flea bite on the edge here. And probably the biggest one will be right in there. So texturing the wire the way that we did actually helps camouflage some of the um, issues you might be having there. So anything that cuts down on your work and looks pretty, I'm all for that. But just go over your piece. Have a little look. Anywhere you see a little mark that you don't like. Come in with your sandpaper, give it a little polish. Same thing here. Where you want to closely inspect this is right here and here. Move the jump ring out of the way. And right here and here. Anywhere that you might have nipped it with the pliers in the process of making, you could end up with a flea bite or a tool mark. So I usually go for the corners, the, the beginning and the end uh, of the wires tucked in to a corner first, and then I have a quick look at the outside edge, and if there's anything there I don't like, it'll get a pass with the sandpaper. But if you have 16 gauge wire, you can make your own clasps. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make jump rings um, with a pair of super flush cutters. Just in case you have a need for a jump ring that's a different size, 
um, or you don't have access to these things online, but you do have some 20 gauge or 18 gauge wire kicking around. I'm going to show you how to make a few jump rings. But for today, there is the clasp and you, you're almost ready now to finish your length of Viking wire knitting. This is Catherine Walters. I hope you enjoyed your video today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. It all helps me keep doing what I'm doing. Thanks and have a great day.